The amazing thing to me about Highsmith's books is the is how intensely she forces you to identify with her protagonist. I really feel capable of murder when I'm reading a Ripley book. I feel like I could throttle someone with my bare hands, dig a hole in my backyard, and bury them in it. And it's a, it's a terrifying feeling, but also strangely empowering. We only got later on the chance to publish The Price of Salt, which is one of the most exciting Highsmith novels. The Price of Salt is the book by Highsmith that I find the most um, interesting intellectually, though in some ways it's not as characteristic of her as uh, her crime-related or thriller-type novels that she wrote. It's a love story. It was a lesbian love story that she wrote in the 1950s and didn't publish under her own name until, gosh, uh, the late 70s or early 80s. And there's this really disturbing scene in it where the young protagonist, Therese, she works in a department store and she, she goes to a co-worker's house after work, this older woman, and she, she falls into a fever and somehow, for some reason, she has to like go to sleep in this strange woman's bed and it's this really creepy, quasi-erotic, highly disturbing scene. I don't even remember what happens next or what why this was going on, but that scene is just emblazoned in my mind. To call Patricia Highsmith a traditional crime writer, as if she's spinning off a book every two months in a assembly line, is a complete travesty. It's an insult to her work as a great artist, as one of the most acute, profound, literary psychologists of human motivations. There is a, a dark element in American writing, too, that goes back to Hawthorne and Melville, um, Edgar Allan Poe, with whom she is often compared. Um, I think because of the way she makes us identify with the criminal perpetrator. She was very worried when her books immediately became, became classified as mystery or crime novels. Nothing wrong with that. Some of our greatest novelists are crime novelists. Proust, Dostoevsky, and Henry James come to mind. Uh, but Highsmith also works on the same levels that these writers work on. She's a great psychological novelist and provides us with uh, the the largest and most extensive anatomy of guilt in the history of American literature. Mm -hmm.